clicker games or idle games are a very weird type of game. They want the player to perform a seemingly boring task and reward the player by letting them do less of it. But even though this concept seems like no one would ever want to play them, it's actually a very popular genre of games. So what are the developers of these games doing right? How do they keep their players engaged with their game? What makes a clicker game good? Today, I, a relatively new and experienced game developer, am going to try to make a good clicker game within 24 hours. I don't know how difficult it is going to be or if it's even possible, but I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's get into it. So I started with the basics. I made a button sprite for the player to click on and I wrote some code that attacks when the player clicks on it. After about 30 minutes of working on this, which is way longer than it should have, we've now got a button and some changing numbers, otherwise known as a clicker game. But obviously this game is absolute trash. No one would ever want to play this. So let's try changing that. The first thing I changed was the background. It now looks like a very nice empty field with a blue sky above it, instead of just the sky. But now the button looks a bit weird, so I designed a new one. I also gave this one a nice little shadow under it and I made an actual clicking animation. The game already feels a lot better with this new button and animation, but it looks like something went wrong with the point display. Right, so after quite some time, we now have the display working again. And this is the reason I don't like working with UI elements. If you give me the choice between a button and a script that attacks if the player is hovering over an object and if they click it, I will always go with the script. No, I don't like doing more work, but UI elements never do what I want them to do. Right, uh, let's move on. After I'd fixed the bug with the display, I started working on an upgrade system. I made the upgrade upgrade button sprite, added a shadow, and animated it. But of course, it doesn't do anything yet. So since we now have this button, let's start making the menu that actually contains the upgrades. Right, so from that time jump, you can probably guess that this took a long time. I highly underestimated how much work this menu would be, but at least it's working now. But the point system isn't. You can see this upgrade system brings something with it that I don't like. Decimals. They are extremely messy and we can't possibly display them all. But luckily enough, a very short piece of code that I just copied from the internet does the job. It rounds up all the decimals so you get a clean looking number. Right, so then I started working on a third button. This one is to buy buildings, which you can use to earn points passively something that's very important for a clicker game. Another long time jump later. We now have the builds button working and we have a menu that pops up with upgrades that actually work and gives you a certain amount of points per second. Right, so we now have quite a lot of different systems at play in our game, like the amount of citizens, the points per citizen, and the total points per second. But currently, we aren't communicating this to the player, so I found some spots that I thought were good and added some displays. Now the player knows exactly what's going on. Now we get to the fun stuff designing the buildings. Because we can't just tell the player they are building stuff without actually showing them. So for a solid hour, I worked on making as many buildings as I could. In the end, I ended up with nine, each of them a bit taller and darker than the last one. It starts off with a very small little house, and I worked my way up to a skyscraper. Then I implemented the buildings into the actual game. I wrote some simple code to detect which building should be shown by using the level variable from the builds menu. And now when you build a building, it shows up. So the game currently looks a bit bland. It could really use some details. So I went into GIMP and started designing some trays. And after I did that, I put them in the game around the buildings. This immediately made the game look a lot more alive. Although there was something missing. Shadows. You see, the buttons have a very nice shadow beneath them, and it really helps make them look good. So I thought, why not give everything else a shadow too? I started with the easy ones, the trees. 
All I had to do was copy one shadow over and over again and put them under the different trees. Then came something a bit more tricky the shadows of the buildings. The problem was that each building has a different size base, so I had to customize the shadow for each build. But this didn't end up being as difficult as I thought, since I could just use the script that shows the different buildings to also show the different shadows. Right, so we now have the ground looking good, but the sky is still very boring so let's add some clouds i started off by making around four different cloud sprites but after a while i realized that one was enough so i copied that one over and over again gave them all a different animation with different speeds and now we have clouds the game is really coming together now it looks pretty good and it feels pretty nice to play so the game currently only has one upgrade this of course isn't enough so i added two more one that influences the amount of citizens, and one that changes the points per citizen. Right, so at this point it was 1am. I had been working on this game for 12 hours straight. And at this point I wish I could tell you I went to bed, had a good night's sleep, and got up early to work on the game again. Sadly enough, this is not what happened because I decided my game needed a saving system. So I spent about four hours trying to figure out serialization and saving in Unity. But at least now there is a save system, is what I really want to be able to tell you. But the truth is that I did not figure it out and went to bed at 5 a.m. without having made any progress. With only three hours left, I decided to begin the second day by playtesting the game to see if there were any bugs or things I should really Add. And while doing that, I discovered that it takes about 20 minutes to get every building to level 9, which is why they don't change anymore visually. And I think this is actually a good thing, since I didn't figure out how to save the game, so at least you can now play everything there is in one session. Overall, I really like the game as it is. There were only a couple more changes I wanted to make. First, I wanted particles to appear when you click on a button, because currently it just doesn't feel quite right. Second, I want to add some kind of tutorial, so you know what to do. And third, I wanted to display the points per click to the player, because currently it's hidden and a bit confusing. I think the points per click display wasn't too difficult. Neither was adding particles to the buttons. But adding a tutorial definitely was. I just couldn't get it right. And with very limited time left, I decided to scrap the idea. But not really. You see, what I did was make sure everything is hidden at the beginning, except for the main button and the point display. I think this makes it very clear what you're supposed to do. And then after a while, other things start showing up. So this is what we've got right now. I think it looks awesome and it feels kind of nice to play. I absolutely love the clicking particles. It just makes clicking the button so more enjoyable. But there is still one thing that for some reason I haven't done yet. That is adding a hovering overlay to the menu buttons. This wasn't too difficult but it has made a huge difference. I also added a splash screen to the start of the game designed an icon and I came up with a name, Nature Clicker. It's not the best name in the world, but it'll do for this game. So the game is now completely finished, and I think it turned out pretty good, especially if you consider that I only had 24 hours to do it. It's a game that feels nice, is relatively short, and most importantly, it keeps you clicking. So did I do it? Did I make a good clicker game within 24 hours? I don't know. I enjoyed playing the game, so I'd say it's at least decent, but I don't know if anyone else likes it. I don't know if it's good. There are still a lot of things missing from the game, like more buildings, sounds, and music. Those things can be really important. The game is also not at all balanced, but personally, even without those things, I like the game. But the only way I can find out if it's a good game is if you guys give me your feedback. There's a link in the description of this video that should take you to the itch.io page where you can download this game for yourself. And please, after you've played the game, write a comment on this video or on itch.io with your thoughts on the game, improvements you think I should make, and the bugs you find. And maybe I'll make a video in which I update this game within 12 hours. 
Right, so with that said, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video if you liked it, and make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. And don't worry, the next video is going to be another devlog, in which we'll do something huge, but small. It's going to be very important for the future of the game, so stay tuned for that. Right, so with that all out of the way, I will see you in the next video. Bye.